Real estate agents are not created equal. And I'm gonna tell you some things in this video that may shock you, some things that you may not have realized, and some things that should concern you, quite frankly, because the gatekeeper to this industry is simply one exam that doesn't even cover some of the things that we're gonna talk about today. You can get licensed as a real estate agent and you're off to the races. Then you can be responsible for tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars of people's money and you may not even know what you're doing. So I'm gonna give you some things to provoke your thought, but most importantly, I'm going to tell you the two Two questions that you should ask a real estate agent and gauge how they answer them. And if they can't confidently, certainly, and accurately answer these two questions, I'm going to politely suggest that you need to consider looking for a different real estate professional to hire for the purchase or sale of your next home. And I found this video, this advertisement came up in my algorithm because I am a realtor. And I thought, man, that is the perfect way to demonstrate to this audience exactly what I'm talking about so that they can understand what exactly is going on out out here because behind the curtain you don't see you don't know you're not a licensed realtor you may be a plumber you may be an athlete you may manage a restaurant you may be a lawyer you have your profession so the intricacies and the nuance of the real estate market is not what you do for a living so you don't see behind the curtain every day. So you're entrusting this supposed professional to be able to be knowledgeable and efficient in those areas. And you don't know if they know what they're doing or not. Let me show you some of what real estate agents are really doing out here. And this should blow your mind and raise your caution level when it comes to hiring your next real estate agent. Check this out. Watch how I use AI to price my houses as a realtor. Two seconds. Bye. Address, generate report, <laughs> boom. With AI. <laughs> Boom. Two seconds. She's sitting at the bar having some cocktails. And in two seconds, she's going to price your house for you. Now, I want you to think about this. Here, let's pull the old calculator out. If you have a $555,000 house, and let's say that you're paying this agent, let's just say 5% for the sake of the conversation. You're paying her 5%. That is $27,750 in commission off the sale of your home that you're paying this so-called professional to sell your home. And when it comes to the pricing strategy, which is one could argue possibly the most critical part of the entire investment that you're making in this person, she's sitting at the bar having a cocktail, going to an app in two seconds and boom, pricing your house that way. I'm gonna ask you a simple question. Is that worth $30,000? She literally did nothing. So in this scenario, theoretically, this hypothetical agent from this commercial, who I'm sure is an actress and not even an agent, so no offense to her, she could theoretically have absolutely no knowledge of how to actually price a home. The fact that she's using that app probably indicates that she doesn't. And she could have no knowledge in the criteria that are actually most relevant in terms of getting the most value out of a home or submitting the correct offer for a home. But yet she's going to gain your business because perhaps she had a good sales pitch, perhaps she's on a billboard, or perhaps she paid for some lead generating program to send her leads. Now we'll talk more about that on the back end because that's how a lot of these people are getting business and it's what you need to be on the lookout for. But I'm going to give you the nugget right now of how to avoid this. Here are the two questions to ask a prospective real estate agent that you're considering hiring before you hire them to proceed with your real estate transaction. The first question is a 1A and 1B. 1A, what is the average price per square foot in this market that I'm in? And 1B, what is the average days on market? They should be able to answer this question quickly off the top of their head and confidently and accurately. I'm not saying it has to be down to the penny, but they should have a very close general idea of what those numbers are. Now I'm gonna give you an example. The average price per square foot in Florence right now is around $147 per square foot across all market segments averaged. The average price per square foot in Conway is in the 190s, call it 195 per square foot. And the average price per square foot for active listings right now in Myrtle Beach is around $225 per. But you also have to segment the market because homes come in different prices and buyers' budgets come in different ranges. And each different market segment in any market across the country will have different averages attached to it in these categories. As an example, as just mentioned, the average price per square foot for homes in Myrtle Beach right now across all market segments across the board is around $225 per for active listings. But the top market segment in Myrtle Beach is over $330 per square foot. And that is a gigantic difference in price. So it's important for a real estate agent to understand what are the averages right now in our market. 
and then specifically relative to the client that I'm working with in the price range or the market segment that we're going to be working out of or into. And same goes for average days on market to understand how to set expectations and to price accordingly based on what your specific needs are in terms of your timeline or if you're a buyer to understand the timeline of the increasing likelihood that we can submit a lower offer and realistically get it accepted. Now I'm going to tell you why this matters because I know that there is a lot of money that's being lost and gained by people with real estate licenses all over the country because of people simply not being educated in the things that I'm talking about in this video. So let me show you an example of this. So let's go back to our calculator. Let's say that you have a $350,000 home, okay, in true value. And the real estate agent that you hire doesn't know how to price a home with accurate precision. And so he or she is off one way or the other by 1% of what that sweet spot would be. That's of course $3,500. Now that's $3,500 that either you're underpricing your home and missing out on that you could have realistically gotten or that you've overpriced and statistically added to the likelihood that your home remains stagnant, that your days on market exposure is more likely to increase, et cetera, et cetera, and you lose money that way. But of course, the same thing applies to a home buyer. If the agent that you hire is not skilled professionally to accurately price that home and is off by just as little as 1%, then you could either be overpaying or missing that home and someone else getting it over $3,500 or overpaying by $3,500. That's not chump change. That's 1% of a $350,000 home. Imagine if an agent is off two, three, four, five percent And for different reasons, this has significant implications for buyers or sellers. But for sellers, a lot of times what we see is when agents can't price a home accurately, they tend to overprice and the home sits and sits and sits and sits. You have to reduce price, reduce price, reduce price. Then the home gets a bad stigma on it and it almost becomes unsellable. And you end up actually making even less money than you could have if you would have just priced it accurately the first time. So I just wanted to share with you this, that real estate agents out here really are actually doing stuff like this. You're paying these people 15, 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000, especially when we get down into our market in Myrtle Beach with these multi-million dollar homes. I mean, 40, 50, 60, $70,000, even in our markets here in South Carolina to sell your home for you. And you have real estate agents that are hoping to gain your business, that are sitting at the bar, having a couple cocktails, have no clue what they're doing with home pricing. And the proof is that they're using an app that they're willing to pay whatever the cost is for that, to do it for them. It may not even be accurate. In fact, I'd be willing to bet my next check that whatever that app is, is probably not truly accurate because it cannot predict shifts in the market. It's not in touch with its local market to understand the heartbeat of what's going on, where the vulnerabilities are, where the opportunities are. It, it can't do it. So that's 1A and 1B are market statistics. Question number two, ask a real estate agent, what are the five things that matter the most in terms of home value? Now, these are as far as the house goes. We're not talking about finishes, granite countertops, sinks, appliances. We're not talking about that stuff. We're talking about the actual house. And here are the five in no particular order. The HVAC system, that is the heating and air system, the roof, the foundation, and the windows. And whatever they say for the fifth one is totally acceptable for the most part, as long as they get those four in their five. Those four things should be in their list of five. I don't care what the fifth one they say is. Why does this matter? If they don't have the foresight and the understanding to say those four things, each one of those are big ticket items. So say that you go to buy a house, the real estate agent you hire to represent you doesn't understand these things. You go into a house, but in the offer and negotiation process, it wasn't considered when tailoring your offer that the windows are extremely old and will need replacing sooner than later and that the HVAC system is 22 years old. Well, guess what? That could be ten dollars to $15,000 easily, depending on how many windows you have, right there alone. So you get into the house, you scrounge every penny to pay your closing costs and your down payment, your moving expenses. You get into the home. Three months later, HVAC blows out. It was guaranteed to do so. It was a ticking time bomb because it was 22 years old. So now you're in South Carolina in September and it's 120 degrees in your house and the windows aren't helping any because they're old and need to be replaced also. And so now you're on the hook for, let's call it $13,000 in work that you need done immediately. Expenses under the house can be even worse. Now, granted, there are some protections, particularly with the foundation, that theoretically your inspector should catch some of that stuff. Your lender is going to require that to be clean and clear to loan the money. But the bottom line is it would be very easy to get yourself into a mess that could cost you 
five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in real money simply because you hired a real estate agent that didn't understand these things. But you may be buying their services because you saw them on a billboard. Do you know that? I mean, I think here in Florence, you could probably get on a billboard for less than a thousand dollars. I would imagine. I've never priced one, but you just have to pay money. If you have some money, you know, even in bigger markets, probably in New York, maybe twenty five thousand dollars. If you have the capital, you just pay some money. It requires no skill. It requires no ability. You just had some funds. You put that into your marketing budget and now you're on the billboard. All you have to do is show up, dress nice, take a nice picture with a big smile on your face. Like it's, it doesn't require anything in terms of you having professional ability. And lastly, the same thing with lead generating. The way that it works in the real estate industry, entities such as Zillow and Realtor.com that have basically bought out and monopolized real estate markets in terms of marketing to an extent, not, not truly, but they really own a large portion of the business that goes on in any different market and they charge a premium for it as well. It's just like an agent told me when I first got my license and I went to an open house of his and he was just chatting with me and he said, you know, in this game, you pay to play. The problem with that is if someone already has the capital for whatever reason, you could be hiring somebody that sure they're building a resume they're doing business because they had money on the front end to buy in. That doesn't mean at all that they have a clue what they're doing. And guess what? The exam to get your license doesn't really cover any of these things that we just talked about. The bulk of the examination process and the course load that you take to get the exam, it's really pretty much all about law and vocabulary. The actual intricacies of real estate markets, which is where your real estate professional actually has the rubber meet the road, isn't even covered in the course load that is required that is on the exam to get a license as a real estate salesperson. So again, the two questions, 1A and 1B, what is the average price per square foot in the market that I'm shopping in, in my market segment? And question two, what are the five things that matter the most in terms of the house itself in relation to the house's value? They should be able to answer these questions quickly and confidently. If they cannot, you should probably call somebody else and see if they can. So there you go. I just want to give you all some exposure to this. If you find that as ridiculous as I do for the amount of money that real estate agents such as myself get paid to do the job that we do, then you are paying attention. If you can put in money and time, then you can market yourself as a real estate agent. Marketing is completely exclusive to ability. Do not be led into a situation that could cost you. And again, why does this matter? Because even if someone is 1% off or even if an agent only lacks an understanding of the big ticket items that are related to home value, the numbers can run up quickly and it can end up costing you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in short order. More often than not, what's happening to people that I see is money that they're missing out on that doesn't get calculated. So the home can't sell thousands of dollars in taxes and insurance and lawn care racks up while it just sits on the market. And then they lose money on the back end because it sat so long that now they can't even get quality offers that they really could have gotten if they'd have just priced it right in the beginning. And so they lost $15,000. I see this stuff on a regular basis. So a lot of this money gets lost and it's not able to be accounted for. It's invisible. And so the agents just keep on rolling. Here's another one, not having a pre-inspection done on a top market segment home, which really ties into question two, not understanding the importance of foundation issues, roof, windows, et cetera, then compounding that by egregiously overpricing the home by about 8%. The home sits for five months out of the six month listing agreement, finally getting an offer on it, only to have the buyer's inspections done and find problems that you should have found on the front end. They back out of the deal. The listing expires. You have to go back in. That house ends up selling for $60,000 less than it was listed and stayed on the market for seven months, paying for lawn care, taxes, insurance the entire time. And this was due to lack of professional ability and efficiency from the agent being hired. And that's a specific case. So this stuff is real. If you want to avoid these things, hire a competent agent. An easy way for you not having any knowledge to have confidence that you're doing that is can they answer these two questions, 1A, 1B, and 2. If they can do that quickly and confidently, there's a good chance that they're going to be in a higher tier of ability. Every market has hundreds 
if not thousands, depending on the city of agents in there. These questions will protect you to a degree. Secondly, if you need any help, I'm connected to a network of real estate agents across the entire nation. If you want a referral to an agent in your area, then I can get you connected with someone that understands the things we're talking about in this video and can bring you the kind of professional service that you deserve, that you're paying for, and you can be confident that you're getting it. So if you need a referral wherever you are in the United States, my contact information is down in the description. Just send me an email and let me know that you need a referral and I will get that over to you. And likewise, if you're in the Florence, Conway, or Myrtle Beach, South Carolina area, these are the areas that I serve. I'd be happy to set up a complimentary consultation with you so that we can go over the specifics of your situation because these are great general insights, but really real estate transactions are always unique and are evaluated on a case-to-case -case basis. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope it saves a bunch of you a ton of money. If you did find this video insightful, please give it a like. I look forward to hearing from you. I wish you all the best in your real estate endeavors. In the meantime, y'all take care and God willing, we'll see you on the next video.